We are a generation who loves God. We are a generation who trusts in God. We will always hope in God. Welcome, 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 my dear friend, to another video brought to you by GFM United Prayer and Revival Ministry Studios. It is Evangelist Gabriel Fernandez here, and I am so happy to be with you. It is indeed another day that God has given us a precious day, a wonderful day, and it is a grace. I truly believe that every day that we get, every day that we wake up in the morning, is a gift. And we realize this when we realize how fragile life can be. It is so important that we understand and know that every day that we get is a gift. And God loves you and He wants to bless you. The people that God has placed around us are also a gift and we should learn to love and appreciate them. I'm sure you already do, but it is so important that it is a hot thing that we really love and appreciate them. I want to speak to you about standing in the gap for family members and friends. And this is one of the best ways that we can love and appreciate them. Because the life that we live here on earth is but a fraction of eternity. It is a tiny bit. If you compare it to eternity, you can't even compare it because it is so small. If you had to zoom out and look at the bigger picture, taking into account eternity, you wouldn't even see the bit of life that we live on this earth. And being a born-again believer, born of water and spirit, born again through Jesus Christ, saved by grace through faith in Jesus, knowing the truth of the matter of things and how things were created, it is absolutely essential that you stand in the gap for your family members, to be specific, your siblings, your parents, the children that you have or you might not have. If you have children, also them, your friends around you. If you love and you care for them, it is essential that you stand in the gap for them and pray for them, believe for them, because there is so much power in doing this. And I want to show you from the Bible that God can move in their life on account of your faith. Let us begin by welcoming the Holy Spirit and then we'll go into the Word and then I'll pray for you and I'll also pray for your family members. Precious Holy Spirit of God, we welcome you. Come, Lord Holy Spirit, in this place where I'm recording and in the place where my dear friend is watching. And bless my dear friend and reveal this word clearly to my dear friend. Help my dear friend to stand in the gap that they too may experience the gift and the joy of salvation. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. My dear friend, the Bible says in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, from verse 18 to verse 20. Now, this is a time when Jesus was teaching. And there were a certain group of men. I don't know if it was their friend, or if it was their family member, or if it was someone really close to them, but they really desperately wanted to get this man to Jesus, so that Jesus could heal him. And they tried and tried to get in through the doors. But the crowds were overflowing. The crowds were drawn to Jesus. The place was blocked. There was no way for them to get in and to speak to Jesus. But they were so determined to stand in the gap for their friend that they climbed up on the roof with the stretcher, with their friend in the stretcher, they broke open the roof and they lowered their friend before Jesus. Now let me show you what the scripture says in the Gospel of Luke chapter 5 from verse 18 to verse 20. It says, And behold, some men were bringing on a bed a man who was paralyzed, and they were seeking to bring him in and lay him before Jesus. But finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went on the roof, 
and let him down with his bed through the towels into the midst before Jesus. And he saw their faith. He said, Man, your sins are forgiven. And that man was healed. That man was delivered. Now, let us go through this slowly and understand. And let us relate it to our everyday life and our family and our friends. Because sometimes there are difficulties in reaching out to our friends. Sometimes there may be blockages and barriers in the lives of our dear friends that they are not able to hear. That they are not able to receive or maybe they don't want to listen. It says, And behold, some men were bringing on a bed a man who was paralyzed. And they were seeking to bring him in and lay him before Jesus. So they, they believed in Jesus. They believed in his ability to do the miraculous. They believed in him. So much so that they were willing to go the extra mile. They knew that Jesus would sort this problem out. And many times we are seeking to lead our children, our family members, our siblings, our parents, the people in our family or friend circle who don't know Jesus to him through love, through genuine love, because we want them also to experience this great grace and love that we are experiencing. It goes on and says, And they were seeking to bring him in and lay him before Jesus, but finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd. Now this portion over here, prophetically speaking, can stand for those barriers and blockages that stop you from being able to truly minister to those family members and friends around you. It goes on and says, They went up on the roof, and they let him down with his bed through the towels into the midst before Jesus. And one thing I truly believe, when you kneel down and you pray, sincerely from your heart, you are going up and closer to God. You are going to greater glories, greater levels, greater altitudes. Because when we pray, we pray in faith. Faith in Jesus. And we are pressing in into the higher realms. And it's absolutely essential through our determination and love for our family members and our friends that we get on our knees and we stand in the gap and we pray consistently and be persistent about them especially our kids. The generation that is coming up in this day and age is being influenced by so many things. There is so many factors and so many influences in their life and it's absolutely essential that we stand in the gap because if we don't, we may lose them. And when I say we may lose them, I mean they may go the wrong way. They may grow up the wrong way. They may grow up not knowing God and not wanting to believe in Him. It goes on and says, They went up on the roof and they let Him down with His bed through the towels into the midst before Jesus. And when He saw their faith, that is the key over there, when He saw their faith, that is the key that shows us that we can stand in the gap for our family members and our friends. When he saw their faith, he said, Man, your sins are forgiven. Now after this, the Pharisees and the religious people of the day became annoyed. They became upset. They were saying, How can this man say your sins are forgiven? Because they didn't believe, but they were there and they were listening. And Jesus spoke to them and said, What is easier to say? Pick up your mat and walk, or your sins are forgiven. But it shows us that that man was completely healed and delivered, and his life was changed on account of his friend's faith. It might have even been his family members. They truly believed that Jesus will sort his problem out. And indeed, he sorted the problem out 
In the same way, let us stand in the gap for our friends and our family, for the people around us, for our friends, our close friends, for our children, for our siblings, for our parents, that they too may come to the knowledge of Jesus. And let us be persistent in it, and Jesus will see our faith that we have to reach out to them, and He will reach out to them, and He will change their lives. You see, it is absolutely essential that God touches the people that we are standing in the gap for, for themselves and their heart, and calls them. Because we can try and convince them with our arguments, and they may seem to come to the faith. But this decision, this decision is a decision of the heart. In order for it to be a true decision of the heart, it needs to be God who tugs on their heart. And God will do it, because God is faithful. You see, I truly believe none of us who are born again are here at our own will. It is not us who stumbled upon God, but it is God who predestined. Before time, He already knew that we would be born, that we would be saved, and He made a way for us. That is why we are born again and saved today. And also, I truly believe the reason that some of us are standing and believing in Jesus is because of the prayers of the people who came before us, the prayers of our parents for us, the prayers of our family members, our, our great-grandparents, our grandparents, the prayers of our friends for us. Therefore, in the same way, stand in the gap, and God shall make a way. Let us go into a time of prayer. I'm going to begin by praising God for a few moments. And as I discern God's presence, I'll pray for you, and I'll pray for your family members. Father, we praise you and we thank you. First of all, thank you for another day. And thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love that is poured out to us in abundance. So much so that when we have you, we have everything that we need to make it through. We give you praise and we thank you that it is not the end until you say it's the end. And you have not said it's the end. The best is yet to come. Greater things are still to come. Greater things are still to be done in our lives, in our communities, in our families, in our cities, in our countries. And I truly believe, Father, that you are not done. You are still to, to bring mighty revivals, still to bring mighty moves in this day and age. I give you praise and I thank you for Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising its shame, and is seated down at your right hand. I give you praise and I thank you for this in the name of Jesus. Amen. My dear friend, now as we begin, I encourage you comment in the comment section and agree with me. There is so much power in agreement. And even as you comment and agree, God is going to bless you. In saying that, let us begin. Father, I pray for my dear friend. As my dear friend stands in the gap for their family members, give my dear friend the grace and the determination to stand in that gap until they see a change until they see your move and your touch in whoever that family member's life is. Maybe it's their children, maybe it's their siblings, maybe it's their parents, maybe it's distant relatives, cousins, people around them or friends. I pray that you will give my dear friend the determination to stand in the gap until you touch that person's life. And I pray for my dear friend's family members, my dear friend's friends, and the people that surround my dear friend. As we together stand in the gap today, both myself and my dear friend who is watching this video, 
I pray that you will do something new. I pray that you will touch somebody. I pray that you will change somebody's life. I pray that you will heal somebody. And I pray that you will do what only you can do for the glory of King Jesus. I ask and thank you for this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. My dear friend, God bless you and God be with you. Receive miracles, signs and wonders. But most of all, receive a deeper connection and a grace to be close to God always. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and God be with you. May the grace of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And may His peace that surpasses understanding surround you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you for watching. If you were blessed by this video and you would like to support us to keep making content like this, you can do so via PayPal or Patreon. The links are provided in the description. God bless you and goodbye.